G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an STG-44, that's Stormgewehr 44 in German, which roughly translates into Assault Rifle. And the whole concept of Assault Rifle is, well, this is kind of the first one, and it, the name Assault Rifle is derived from this thing being called a Stormgewehr, so a little bit of history for you. It's widely considered to be the first of its type, the Assault Rifle, the automatic weapon man portable like this, but it's also got the intermediate cartridge rather than the submachine guns that we're using uh, mainly throughout the war, which would lack stopping power and accuracy over distance. This thing would be fairly accurate. It had a, a lot of its problems. The US and British complained about its unreliability, but the one thing they talked about that it was really good was accuracy. We're almost firing 800, sorry, 8 millimeter rounds, so <laughs> yeah. That's pretty strong. It's using a shortened version of the standard rifle cartridge of the uh, German variety from back in the day, which obviously means you, know, you got to fit it in there. But we get some decent power out of this. There's also conversions to make this fire the 7.62 rounds from the Nuka World DLC, but as far as I know, it doesn't change the magazine, so they're just stacked in all weirdly. Maybe there's like a, a right angle feeding mechanism going on a little bit like the P90, but. Yeah, this thing's got custom sounds, custom animations. I will stress that I've um, downloaded a hotfix for this to get some of the textures working properly because we are using the 2K. And I've also reduced the sounds to vanilla level. I like that that's an option. I don't like it when weapons are loud and I have to scream over the gameplay just so you can hear my voice. But we don't have to worry about that this time, so that's great. The customization here is actually pretty decent. Right now, I've got the automatic receiver. Basically, you'll find exactly what you'd have on this assault rifle as standard for receivers so auto powerful 117 damage that's not too bad legendary effect is there if you need it a couple of muzzles here you can have a compensator for recoil control a heavy compensator for better recoil control i do like how they don't penalize your range here usually fallout 4 likes to penalize your range if you put recoil supplementing muzzles on but we don't have to worry about that this time uh not even the muzzle uh, sorry, the bayonet muzzle will actually reduce your range, which is a big no-no from Bethesda. I hope they don't do that again, but, you know, I, I know what they're going for. There's also a suppressor here, which actually doesn't give me the ace operator perk to go along with it. This will change the sounds, though, and increase our recoil control and also accuracy. It doesn't increase our range, despite extending the barrel out a little bit, but it is what it is. Right now, I've got the standard sight. You can have the Night R Reflex sight, which previously, if I didn't download that, that hotfix, I believe this would be completely purple and you wouldn't be able to see through it, so it's nice to be able to use it. This is a Robco holographic sight. Looks extremely tiny, perhaps compact for use in close quarters, and a Zeta 4 scope, which I'm going to be utilizing for a version with the semi-auto receiver. Looks like there's no Picatinny rails on this. We've got some weird mounts on the side here to get those scopes on so don't knock that too hard it'll bloody fall off or misalign it but we'll go for the reflex sights here and then we'll minimal it and move on right now we've got a center magazine we can have an assault magazine which lowers the capacity wouldn't you want to be assaulting with a higher magazine capacity maybe you get a faster reload here it doesn't say that it gets a faster reload but it does reduce the weight by half a pound so you know if carry weight's a problem then put the assault magazine on heavy magazine gives you a 45 round capacity and something that looks like a giant banana sticking out the bottom of your rifle very nice we can have red oak furniture frozen trench warfare water damage don't do that one that's bad for your weapon burn birch cedar ebony mahogany maple pine poplar purple heart walnut and that's it so you get to choose all the types of uh, wood furniture Let's go ebony because it's a metal in Skyrim, also it's black, so it makes it look cooler. Next up, we've got the barrels. We can have that shortened to 13 inches, extended to 19, or at standard uh, 16, which will throw the uh, 19 one on. It's actually moved our uh, customization thing slightly out. We've actually got a handguard thing here. We can wrap some things around the sling, probably to keep your mitts a little bit less burnt if you want to sustain fire with this thing so i feel like that's a fairly good idea also increases your speed of adsing no thing you can do with the stock you can't even chuck a recoil compensating stock on it although you do get slightly better recoil out of the stock that is their standard so you can have the soviet rounds which is the rounds from nuka world and the kurtz rounds which are loaded in now we'll get those on the chemistry bench a little bit later on there's a charm here. You can have an iron cross on it. You can have a factory one, a worn one, chrome, 
or gold. Um, I don't know if the Iron Cross is typically known to be offensive, but in case it isn't, chrome. Alright. Also, did I hear bottle caps? Yes, it actually costs bottle caps to do that. Weird. That's really weird. I'm, I'm investing in the weapon here. And you can have a damage modifier on this, which, funnily enough, if you choose the standard receiver and crank this down to 80 or minus 100% damage, sorry, minus 80, you get infinite damage because it ticks over. It's basically a one-shot kill everything. Uh, so there's that. And you also you can change the wear of everything else. So if you want it to be gold and black, chrome and black, rose gold factory there's also a burnt thing here which if you use a burnt stock and a burnt receiver and everything else barrel too i guess i think that'd actually look really cool but for now we'll just leave this as let's go factory and then uh, we'll create a couple other versions of these with all different varying colors and then we'll shoot things on your chemistry workbench scroll down to weapons stg 44 you'll find it just here you'll be able to craft the rounds one acid five lead and two steel get you 50 rounds a piece you get a lot of bang for your buck there and you can see that shortened cartridge a tiny little babby rifle round there and you can craft the stg itself for gun nut rank 2 and these resources Righto, so here we are outside of the immersive Gunners Plaza, the new version where they've built the entire wall around it before you have made the Minutemen pay for it. Haha, <laughs> Donald Trump joke. Anyways, this is the STG-44 in first person. You'll see when you actually draw this weapon, you'll pull the charging handle back and the ejection port cover will flip up, which is nice. Also, you might notice that the cross on the side there has some physics on it, so it's kind of like your Rainbow Six Siege... What's the term? Fiddles? F fidget spinner on the side of your gun to, you know, amuse the children with uh, attention span issues. But that's kind of cool. That's nice. Also, not, not offensive either because, you know, it has history besides being used by uh, Germany during the Second World War. And this is the iron sights. This is the assault version. It's automatic, but it's burnt. It's all burnt. Someone left it outside and then the nuclear war happened. It all burnt. It all burnt up. Here's my scoped one. It appears to be using something like a medium scope suppressor on this. Also, it's gold because, you know, that kind of tackiness is what you'd expect out of a German rifle. <laughs> and this one also has some tacky gold in it as well. Uh, it's semi-automatic, but it's got that tiny little reflex sight there that is can't really see much of that. I, just, I was hoping for a little bit more of a FOV zoom, just a little bit more of a zoom in with this holographic sight, but it doesn't look like we got it. We'll start off by sniping, safety quick save just in case, and we'll begin. Tell you what, they're taking off pretty well, and I think I'm in the wrong position to get a whole lot of damage done here. I'm gonna try to target the ones that are slightly closer. That's better. A lot of visual recoil right now, a lot of inferred recoil. If I try to get many follow-up shots, uh, the camera's going to be a jiggling and a shaking. So, yeah, a whole lot of shaking going on here. There's a song about it in this game by Vanilla. I barely listen to the Vanilla the game music. There we go, there's our first catch of the day. And, well, I don't think the uh, DPS here is going to be all that spectacular. And this firing solution, there's a... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting whiplash just from this recall, and if you think that's bad, prepare, prepare yourselves for motion sickness beyond anything you've ever seen before. Oh boy, I've got a headache already. Let's begin. So, uh, full autoing these guys, I'm thanking my lucky stars that I chose a 45 round magazine because, um... It's gonna take a bit of killing to drop these gunners, that's for sure. These are uh, German cartridges, they are not as strong as what you think they are. And yeah, there's a lot of aim down sights, recoil, even when you tap the trigger, it just shudders. It's so bad that they've acknowledged that the animation might have been too much, because on the Nexus page there was a version that stops the motion sickness happening when sprinting, you understand. But. I think it's too late for them to change all of the gun animations at this point, so that's, I guess, is our only option. You can stop the motion sickness when you're sprinting, but not any time else. So what does that leave us? Well, 
Here's what we could do instead. We could just go third person. Absolutely no visual recall, no camera shuddering at all. We have to worry about the damage of this thing. This is why they put a damage slider on there, I understand, but... Are we going for endgame here? Don't really think so, to be honest, but this is a, a nicer version. This is the assault version, by the way. Iron sights here. We'll take a quick look at this thing and... Whoops, we're in Nerd Rage now. Terrible, terrible time to go into Nerd Rage because... A, I've got a very low ammo capacity and B, I don't have a lot of gunners to kill to replenish my health. We'll switch over to something else. Shoot them, please. Thank you. What a timely level up that was. You noticed that gunner right then was doing like the bash kill animation? What's up with that? So we might be able to get something happening if we just spam the trigger in first person because the damage per shot here, it's not that bad. And it looks like we can sort of AN94 this. This is just precision German engineering, I guess. And knowing that we get this much damage out of the version uh, just using it in close quarters, if I was just to use this version, Instead, where I can actually aim down sight to make my shots a little bit more precise. This is probably the way to go. You also notice that guy's got some sort of laser grand. Um, I was going to do that one, but then the storm gear popped up, so I had to do this. But we're going to get ourselves into a little bit of strife here, I think. We could probably play this a little bit more intelligently than I am doing at the moment, but uh, we need to get some of these crits going. Go for a crit here. There we go. Keep them coming. I want this gunner dead. Preferably be by next Tuesday. We'll push it back to next Thursday. Thanks, Vats camera. Moving on. Yeah, it looks like the best way to run this, I think, for just for flat out DPS, is literally use this semi auto run up to people and spam on the trigger because sometimes you just get the double shots the shots double up a little bit and that causes you to get a little bit higher damage than what you'd expect also i forgot to shoot at these turrets the stationary things that'll never move probably a waste to get my first couple of shots on them anyway so sure that's fine might get ourselves into a bit of extra nerd rage soon enough here let's try to get some bat shots now that's not too bad. Go for a critical here. The second shot will finish him. That's nice. Looks like this thing's fairly accurate in VATS. And I did notice the, this thing's range stat was really, really high. Like 284 for a suppressed weapon. That's pretty unheard of in vanilla terms. So I think that's a... I guess you could say that's a little bit of a plus to it, you know? A, a positive to offset the, just the mediocre damage that it's putting out. But yeah, we've got gunners all over the bloody place. We've got crits to get back, so we'll utilize as much bats as possible just to make this a little bit better. Some extra cinematic shots would be nice. Although all of them are going to be from this very low angle. Which causes the VATS camera to say, okay, we're just doing the same thing over and over, like you saw earlier, but I feel like the VATS camera, it suits a melee playstyle a lot better, because you can do a lot cooler animations rather than just standing there shooting them, but maybe that's a thing they could implement in the next Fallout game. Someone down there is not dead yet, but look, I think you get the idea of this thing against the gunners. I've been cleaning up the stragglers for a while now. Nerd Rage is not active, but just a couple of shots in the head, and they all die. And I think someone's inside, but also not inside. So, not not cool, bro. You come out here right now. You know what, buddy? Two can play at that game. There we go. No clip. I win. Yes.
I can't believe I died on the door breach at the end. Okay, we've reached up to the sun, switched it off, and now we're going to do this during the night. Just to give it a little bit more of a run with stealth, because we didn't really get that much on it. it ooh. Yeah, the headache started again. <laughs> I'm curious to the design direction of that. Was that a giant Kazador? It may have been, you know. Looks like it. Is he poisoned? I think super mutants are immune to that, but I'm hoping for a sniper knockdown. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Are we going to get one? No, but it appears that with our glorious sneak criticals, we can do this handily, in fact. Which can be said about basically any weapon with a capacity over 20 and a fire rate like this. But still, that performed a lot better there, and we got 4,500 XP out of it as well. And what do we have here? I see a Kazador. I see a... It's a glowing Kazador. Oh, that's so cool. That's sick. That's awesome. Well, wow. well done, modder. Well done. Okay, well, I'm going to go shoot something else, but make it automatic this time. All right, time. let's fight the Wendigo with some German hardware, but automatic this time. We'll see how we go. And 340 damage. We'll try to get some headshots here. It's nice that we're getting a couple of staggers. He's straight into mutation. And now we've got to worry about him charging at us and possibly one-shotting us. Uh, fun fact about current character. She's, like, meant to be German from Pittsburgh. It sounds German enough, doesn't it? Um, that's why she's dressed up in the whole bombshell outfit get up you ever played the pit from fallout 3 it'd be cool if they remade that in fallout 76 they remade all of the other sort of raider apparel so i don't see them not being able to remake all of those ones because you know we've got the pit in fallout 76 and all it is is disappointment and trogs and other than that stable performance that i can be happy about but you know could have been so much better oh grind i forgot about grind but this uh, that's neither here or there the uh we're getting a lot less damage you may have noticed um yeah we're hitting for about 340 now for like 46 so we've lost about 300 damage with those multipliers which i feel like doesn't add up really well that might just be all of the damage resistance and reduction from the difficulty there's my vertebird in the background by the way um not doing much should probably call it in but we're having a pretty easy time just simply out pathing this monster here kind of like what you'd get uh from old school zombies where you just sort of lead them around and then sprint past them i think we got a clutch stagger there it actually took him out of his diving animation but our luck might run out in a second stagger please whoa right on time now we've got plenty of bullets but as you can tell we're struggling to get this kill. We're just lucky our dance moves are far more stronger than his, I suppose. I like a quick little stagger. That's just the commando perk doing a little something something for me, which is nice. We're so close to the finish here, and the Bethesda pathing is real. Once you learn to exploit Bethesda pathing, any challenge run you can do in terms of damage, it just finished unless you do something really stupid like go into the kitty kingdom with a with a not suit apparent with a hazmat suit unless you're doing something like that then you'll have problems okay that took ages but we got it done in the end and i think i'm gonna leave it there for the stg 44 wow this thing even shakes when you're standing still just, just okay it's not that heavy stop being a drama queen anyways so Opinion time. Honestly, I don't really like it, to be honest. The damage is... I mean, you could always fix the damage yourself. That's fine. But the animation sets, um, not really a fan of. Like, aiming down sights, moving like this. Like, come on. Really? And even when you sneak as well, it's worse. I might, That might be realistic for a weapon like this, but I kind of don't need that. I'd, I'd like the camera to be nice and stable. I can understand the shutter and the recoil. That's fine. Um, but, yeah, just moving around and doing stuff. So, I think it's a little bit too much. And if they could fix it, then I would be pretty grateful. Like, even sprinting. Like, 
you run with any object in your hands, your vision doesn't go like that. Your brain, like your head might be doing that, but your brain fixes it up for you, so your vision stays in nice and... Like, you, you run and have one of those little minor headlights you have in your head, watch the light bounce, but your vision will be kept stable. Your brain fixes that for you. It's like it's disconnected that part of my brain here, and now I'm... The, the balancing things in the eardrums are... Uh, They've all corrupted somehow. Maybe it's because the sound ruptured them. <laughs> That's why we had to turn down the sound version. But anyways, this thing also compatible with classic holstered weapons. Check it out. Very nice. You can wear them. But, you know, if you do like your STG-44s, this is a high quality weapon mod. Would recommend it. But in terms of, like, strictly performance speaking, then I'm not all that impressed by it. But other than that, the presentation on this weapon and its ability to be crafted also injected into the level list as well. So... Uh, look out for enemies carrying this weapon. You can loot it from them. Yeah, just everything about this weapon mod is good, it just except for the damage and the animations, really. That's honestly my thoughts, and if that if those aren't such of a deal breaker for you, then great. Download this mod, you won't be disappointed. And with that, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye, see ya.